I want to show you how we can create custom vignetting in Lightroom using a bit of masking in order to bring more attention to the subject. So if you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. As always, if you're just here for the tutorial part, make sure to check the chapters of the video because I will be showing the whole editing process for this image, starting with the basic adjustments. So let's open up the basic panel. Right away, we want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape, which will just very slightly bring up the base saturation of the image. Then I want to work on the tones. That means I think this image could be a lot brighter. So I'm going to bring up the exposure, always paying close attention to this program because we don't want to overexpose too badly. But this is looking like a good start. I do want to turn this into a very high key image. So I'm also going to try bringing up the highlights quite a bit. You might think this is already clipping, but if you take a look at the histogram, you can see we are actually still in a safe spot right here. I think I'm even going to push the whites a little bit, making this image even brighter, just like this. Now, the reason I'm going for a crazy brightness like this is because I will be adding darker areas throughout the image later on with the masking to introduce that vignetting effect. So having a brighter base image just helps us preserving some more details in those areas that will get darker later on. Now we do want to introduce a little bit of contrast. Therefore, I'm going to bring down the shadows and I'm also going to drop the blacks very carefully. This is adding some nice punch between those trees on the top of the hill and the white landscape. Now that we have adjusted the tones, what I'd like to do next is to work on the white balance. In this case, I think I want to add a little more coldness to the image by bringing down the temperature very, very gently. Of course, we don't want to introduce too much blue because otherwise it looks very, very strange quite fast. Right around here is looking like a good spot. We do have some blue tones in the snow, but not too much. Also, I want this image to look really, really sharp and clear. So I'm going to bring up the texture. I'm slightly going to bring up the clarity and I'm also adding a little bit of dehaze just for some more extra contrast. And finally, let's introduce some vibrance because I want to have some colors in this image as well. Wonderful. So that is our base image. Let's compare to before real quick. Exposure wise, this image is much, much better already. Also, the colors do look much better in my opinion. But now let's take a look at that custom vignetting effect. Most of the times, if I want to add a vignetting effect, all I'm doing is to go down into the effects panel right here and use that vignetting slider, which admittedly works quite well for most cases. However, this is a very uniform way of adding vignetting and we don't have that much control over it. For this image, this does not work at all. So I want to show you a different way of adding vignetting. And of course, we're going to be using masks for that. So let's open up the masking panel. And what we want to do for this image is to basically stack differently sized linear gradients and radial gradients to achieve a similar effect. My approach here is to start from the bottom. So I'm going to use a linear gradient and I will be covering a rather big area in the foreground like this. And then I'm going to bring down the exposure. I really don't want to go too crazy. I'm only using tiny amounts of adjustments because I will be stacking multiple different masks on top of each other. Right away, I want to add another linear gradient. This time I'm going to create one coming in from the left side. And you can see I'm placing these linear gradients just around that subject in the center. This area right here is where I want the viewer to look at. So it makes sense to make this area right here in the center brighter and the outsides of it darker. So with this linear gradient, again, I'm slightly bringing down the exposure, making the borders of the image darker this way. Now, what I don't like about it is this linear gradient is also affecting the sky which really doesn't need to be darker. So what I'm going to do is to say subtract and I'm choosing select sky. This way, only the landscape will become darker. I actually might want to make this linear gradient a little bit bigger, just like this. And I'm going to add a third linear gradient for the bottom left corner. Again, I'm making it rather big. 
kind of pointing every single linear gradient towards the subject in the center, as you can see. And I don't want to bring down the exposure in this area. Instead, I want to bring down the whites just to have a softer effect. What I want to do as well is to make the landscape at the top, just above the subject, appear to be a little darker. Again, I'm using a linear gradient for this and I'm placing it right here on the left side of that hill. And that's important because here the hill lies in the shadows. If you would be placing it on the right side of the hill and make that area darker, this would just look unnatural because the light is hitting that area right here. So we don't want to affect this area. And again, we also don't want to affect the sky or the trees up there. So let's subtract and select sky mask first. And then I'm also going to say subtract and let's choose a brush. And I'm just roughly brushing over this area because we don't want to change the trees. And I might actually want to subtract a linear gradient just to get rid of that area on the right side like this. Okay, this is looking good. Now, again, all I'm doing is to slightly bring down the exposure. And doing this will also add a little more depth to the image. And of course, it helps focusing the eye right here on the center area. Of course, we can not only improve this effect by making areas darker, but we can do the opposite and make areas brighter. So let me demonstrate that using another linear gradient, I will be covering this bright snowfield right here in the foreground like this. Now I don't want to affect the very bottom part and the left side, which we already made darker. So I'm going to use the subtract function once more, use a linear gradient, and I'm going to get rid of the bottom part. And I'm going to get rid of the left side with another linear gradient. Due to the mask overlay, you can already see the area which I'm targeting, which is right here in the center where the subject is. And then what I'm going to do is to bring up the whites to introduce more brightness to this spot. Perfect. This is looking great. I do think I want to make this effect a little stronger. This time, let me use a radial gradient. I'm going to cover the center like this. And I'm going to say subtract linear gradient because I don't want the top part to be affected right here. And what I'm going to do in here is to again just bring up the whites, introducing some more brightness. Wonderful. So that's how I create custom vignetting for my images to guide the viewer's eye to the important areas of the image. Let me deactivate all these masks so you can actually see the difference from before. Here you can clearly see how the subject is kind of lost in the landscape and to after where we have created a very subtle highlighted area around the subject in the center. All right, but we are not done with the masking. I want to add one more mask, creating a little bit of a glow effect coming in from the right side. So let me create a radial gradient. I'm going to make it rather thin like this and I'm placing it right above the brightest area of the sky. Let's make it a little thinner actually. And to add the glow effect, I'm going to bring up the blacks. All right, I'm also going to bring down the dehaze for that. And I do think we could use some more warmth in the sky. So I'm going to carefully bring up the temperature here, just like this. Perfect. So that's already it for all the masking adjustments of this image. Now let's do just a little bit of color grading. I'm going to start in the color grading panel for the split toning and I want to use the highlights to add more warmth to them. So we want to set up the hue in a way to add warmth. I guess I'm going with something in the yellow range around here and I'm going to bring up the saturation. So I like what this does to the sky, but I don't really like the effect it has on the snow. What we can do to fix that is to use the balance slider right here. And as I bring it down, only the brighter highlights will be affected by the split toning. So this is looking pretty good to me. I don't want to overdo it with the colors for this scene, of course, but I do want to go into the midtones right here and I want to, and I want to make use of that luminance slider. That means I'm going to bring down the luminance for the midtones, making all these tones a little bit darker this way. I think it just looks better. Wonderful. That's it for the split toning. Let's also do a little bit of color grading in the calibration tab. 
And as always, I just like to bring down the blue primary hue and let's raise the saturation. Then one final thing, the sharpening in the details tab. As always, I'm using the same settings for the radius, bring it all the way down. And for the details, bring it all the way up. Then I'm holding down the Alt key while adjusting the masking slider. Right around here looks good. We only need the trees to be sharpened like this. And I'm going to increase the amount of sharpening and we are done editing this image. So I hope this little tutorial on how to create custom vignetting for your images was interesting. I hope it will help you with your future images. If you have anything to add or if you have any questions left, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.